Hello again, Internet. It is I, Expresso Shaco. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's really nothing special about me. I'm just a guy on the, just a guy talking to a camera. So today's uh, today's video, or rather, this video that you are watching now. This is a guide to how to breed Pokemon. Now I know what you're thinking. Yeah, people have already done this. Well, that's true. They have. If you're watching my face, it's. I mean, I'm sorry. I I, I can't help it. I, I don't have my bag. Um. Anyways, breeding competitive Pokemon has been a big part of the franchise, pretty much since the concept was introduced uh, all the way back in Gen Two. That said, I was something like seven when Gen 2 was introduced, so don't ask me to talk about that, uh, because I literally know next to nothing as far as the Gen 2 breeding mechanics go. But, I digress. Uh, breeding competitive Pokemon is, uh, is important if you want to have good IVs for uh, your Pokemon if you uh, want to uh, take them to ranked battle spot, or even just tournaments. So... On my screen, I have uh, the main items you're going to want for competitive breeding. And if if you have just gotten the game, or if you haven't been playing for a while, or you're even just thinking, I want to get into uh, some ranked battles, what I highly recommend before doing any breeding is go beat the main storyline of the game, unlock the judge feature by going through the battle tower, and... Uh, winning your seven battles because it is very very important that you can see what you're doing uh, as far as the IVs go. The reason why is because the way how this works is if you take two Pokemon uh, of the same egg group because anything that can breed is assigned an egg group. Um, if you take them together and just throw them into the, the nursery um, the IVs are guaranteed to be scrambled. And I know I know, you could be thinking, well, I'll just power something up to level 100 and throw a gold bottle cap at it. Sure. But think about how many different uh, Pokemon there are. And think about how many um, how many different uh, Pokemon uh, you might want to use. If you only intend on using the same six for it, I mean, that's kind of viable, I guess. But I highly don't recommend it. So back to my point be able to see what you're doing IV-wise. The items on my screen, all the way from the Everstone down to the Power Anglet, are important. The Everstone here, you put that on either a male or female Pokemon, or Ditto, uh, because genderless Pokemon uh, require Ditto to breed. You put it on them. That will pass down the nature of whatever uh, you're trying to breed. So, for example, I want to breed uh, a competitive Rillaboot. Well, I put the uh, I put the Everstone on my Rillaboom, and of course this Rillaboom is male. So if I have a female uh, member of the Grookey line or a Ditto, I put the Everstone on my Rillaboom, and that will pass down my adamant nature. The next item that's equally as important as the Everstone is the Destiny Knot. Now, basically what happens is each Pokemon has um, six different stats with IVs. You got your HP, you got your attack, your defense, special attack, special defense, and your speed. What the Destiny Knot does is, at random, it guarantees five of those IVs are passed down. It could be two from the father and two from the mother, two from the... or two from one parent, three from Ditto, it could be five from Ditto. That is the, uh, that's the main reason why this is important, because basically, as you pass down IVs, the better you get, you swap out, and then put the new ones in, until basically you get the right amount of IVs, or you get close enough that it's only going to cost you something like one bottle cap to max out. Because as you do more max raids, you get more EXP candy, you get more rare candy. It's very easy to level Pokemon up to one, level 100 in Gen 8. In Gen 7, not so much. But in Gen 8, it has become very, very easy. 
to level up to 102 Hyper Train. And Gen 8 has also uh, made it very easy to manipulate natures through the introduction of nature myths. Now, the reason why I have the rest of these items, the Power Bracer, Power Belt, Power Lens, Power Band, Power Anklet, and Power Weight, the reason why I have those items on here is whichever um, parent is holding that item, the respective stat that that item boosts for training is the IV that is guaranteed. Certain times you don't want um, a maxed IV. And the two stats that I would say you wouldn't want necessarily maxed is speed and attack. Sometimes you might want to zero in your speed stat is because you uh, want to run Trick Room, where you want to be as slow as possible. Say, for example, you have... Um, say, let's use Corsola, for example. Corsola is very slow. You have a zero speed. Uh, trick Room goes up. Corsola is moving as, or pretty much as fast as possible. It's probably one of the first ones to go uh, out of the four in doubles or out of the two in, uh, in singles. Corsola is also another reason why uh, you might want a zero in attack stat, or rather specifically, strength sap is the reason why you might want a zero in your physical attack stat. Because basically the way how strength sap works is it relies on the target's physical attack stat to, give, to, to, to determine how much HP the user is getting back. Foul play is also another move that relies on the uh, the physical attack, sp attack stat of the target. So basically, if you have a physically oriented Pokemon, obviously you want the attack stat. If you have a special attacker, you don't want a high... You want to minimize uh, how much damage you're either taking through a foul play or uh, how much HP you're giving your opponent back if they hit you with a strength stat. So that's why the power items are important. Um, if you can guarantee a specific stat, uh, you want to make sure you're not giving your opponent uh, as many potential edges as you can. So that's why that's kind of important for breeding. The next thing, and I, I think you can probably guess this because I've already mentioned Ditto, is you want to get as many good IV Dittos as possible. Or rather, you only need a handful, I guess. For example, this Ditto that I have on my screen it's 5 iv bead, and the, the special attack stat is very good, but we don't care about that. So, for example, if I were to use this Ditto to breed, I would likely be using it to breed a physical attacking uh, Pokemon with either guaranteeing uh, a nature through the other parent. And some natures that it's nice to have um, handy... Also, you get to see through my boxes of different Pokemon, I guess. Uh, where's Ditto Squad? Ah, there's Ditto Squad. Also, the reason why the Noctile's in the middle is because that Ditto that I just showed you is normally where I keep that. What you want um, is you want to try to get as many uh, good combination uh, IV Dittos. And there have been a, there has been an event before where Dittos have spawned more frequently. There's a, there's a location in the Isle of Armor that spawns Dittos uh, pretty frequently. Some natures that you want are Timid, uh, Modest, uh, Adamant, uh, Brave, uh, that's another Timid. I have a lot of Timid Dittos. Uh, there's another Adamant, uh, Jolly, that's another one that you want. And the reason why you want these natures. So, Adamant and Jolly are, uh, two of the best natures for a physical attacking Pokemon, where Modest, uh, Timid, and Quiet are very good for special attackers. Anyways, uh, before I go off on too much of a tangent as far as natures go, um, if you have those natures um, for a physical attacker, Adamant's great because you're cutting your special attack uh, for your physical attack, and Jolly, you're cutting your special attack for your speed. Uh, not many Pokemon in general uh, run uh, mixed sets, meaning usually something is going to typically run probably all physical moves or probably all special moves. 
So it's okay to take from one stat uh, nature-wise and give to the other. And whether or not you want to boost your speed or whichever attacking stat you're using, that's uh, that's mainly it. And now the main and final important part about Gen 8 is where do you do this? So you can go to the nursery on either Route 5, which is which is basically across a giant bridge uh, that cuts through the um, wild area in the main section of the game. So you talk to this girl here, if she's got her arms crossed like she does, she'll give you an egg. And then the other location is the bridge field area of the wild area, where you can talk to... Yeah, I'm just waiting for the screen to load. So basically, if you go to the bridge field in the wild area, you can go right here to this building here, talk to the the breeder, and if her arms are crossed, she, she will hand you an egg. That's pretty much it for uh, competitive breeding. So a little bit of a post-editing uh, update. Uh, somehow, while I was initially filming this, I completely forgot about egg moves. You know, one of the most important things about breeding. So basically, what's an egg move? An egg move is a move that a Pokemon can learn, but not normally learn through level up uh, or TM or TR. So basically, a move that something else gets that can be passed down when breeding. Uh, an example of this could be uh, Lapras, for example. Lapras gets access to Freeze Dry, which it doesn't normally learn through level up. And in order to get Freeze Dry on Lapras, you need to breed it with either an Aurorus or an SQ. The other thing is, is uh, my laptop does not want to screen record, so you guys have to make do with some screenshots instead. So basically, to check to see if a parent um, has a list of moves that can be passed on to a certain thing, uh, you need to use a little bit of uh, external sources for this, uh, usually uh, the internet or guidebooks if those are still a thing. Uh, in this case, I am currently on Cerebi. Um, yeah, so anyways, egg moves are basically moves that you have to get through breeding. Um, some moves can be uh, passed on from one direct species to another. Uh, for example, Aurora is passing on Freeze Dry to Lapras, like I just mentioned. But sometimes other moves uh, require a little bit of in-between. For example, uh, Lapras gets uh, Tickle, which... I didn't really know until I brought up Cerebi to look at this, but it doesn't get anything that directly gets Tickle to breed with, so you have to breed either something... You have to breed something that learns Tickle uh, with either uh, Lu the Ludicolo line or the Azumarill line, and then take that Pokemon and breed it with a Lapras. The last thing about Egg Moves 2 that's important to touch on is... Uh, in Gen 8, you can pass an egg move on to a Pokemon of the same species uh, without necessarily having to breed it. So basically what you do is you go into a Pokemon Center, and in the uh, left-hand corner, there's a guy that's standing with an Indeedee behind the counter. You talk to him, make sure you have an open move slot. You then go back to the nursery... Put the two Pokemon in the daycare. So in this case, if you want to put freeze dry from one Lapras onto another, you can put two Lapras in. It doesn't matter what gender the Lapras are. So long as there's an open move slot, you uh, walk around for a little bit, go back, uh, pick up your Lapras, and if you did it right, your Lapras will now have freeze dry. Yeah, that's pretty much uh, the whole little tangent uh, that I I kind of forgot to mention, but anyways, uh, that's Egg Moves. Uh, very oversimplified, and uh, yeah, enjoy the uh, remainder of the post-recorded video I have put out. Future Expresso gone. That's pretty much it for uh, competitive breeding. This is more for uh, this is more for if you want to collect shinies in general. So basically, you want a foreign Pokemon. Uh, that's not set to the same language as your Switch. 
So in this case, for example, I have uh, this Japanese Rillaboom. You take that, and you can either take a another Pokemon. Uh, in this case, the Japanese Pokemon, or this Japanese Rillaboom I have is male. So basically, if I want to hunt Shinies, I can just take this, uh, this Rillaboom, and I can find a female Pokemon, or a Ditto, um, and put them together. If Rillaboom uh, corresponds with their uh, same egg group, you can get eggs. That's pretty much as obvious as it is. If they don't match the same egg group, well, you're not going to get a you're not going to get an egg. Um, and then Ditto is just com uh, compatible with anything that can breed. So ideally, it's best to have a foreign Ditto uh, than anything else. If you have the shiny charm item, which you get for completing the uh, the main Pokédex, that increases your odds of getting a shiny to something like 1 in 512 odds. That doesn't guarantee that you're going to get... Um, that doesn't mean you're going to get um, a shiny within 500 eggs. Um, it could be long, or it could be more, or it could be less. Uh, for example, I uh, I bred a shiny sizzle pea. It took me 975 eggs. That's a very long time. Um, but on the flip side, I bred a shiny grookey. Got it within the first hundred eggs. It's all about RNG and probability. And you might be thinking one in 500 uh, odds are terrible. Yeah, it technically is. But without the shiny charm, your odds are something like 1 in 4,000 odds, which are not good. So, basically, uh, if you're looking for a shiny, uh, just get a shiny charm. Or get the shiny charm. There's only one in the game because it's a key item. Um, and then, basically, do the Masuda method, because that's the other thing, too. To get that 1 in 500 odds, you also need a foreign Pokemon to do the Masuda method. Uh, that's what gives you the 1 in 500 odds. Uh, no Shiny Charm and no Masuda Method, it's like 1 in 4,000 odds. That's, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm used to battles, I'm not used to doing guides. Um, and like I said, um, that, that's pretty much it. It can be a little daunting, and you know, sometimes RNG can... I mean, RNG is RNG. Um, I will show you this, because I am kind of proud of it. Yeah, it's this one. So, as you can see, I have a shiny desk form lichen rock in a beast ball. RNG is what it is because basically, I wasn't even shiny breeding. I wasn't even Masuda methoding. I was just trying to get the beast ball to pass down. Um, oh, I suppose that's one one other thing to uh, to talk about uh, breeding because that is a mechanic that. Uh, some people might like, some people might uh, like to have a specific theme for their Pokeballs. If you breed Pokemon, from Gen 6 onward, the the female parent will pass down the Pokeball uh, if it's with uh, the same egg group but a different species. A male parent and a female parent, if they're the exact same species, so in this case, if it's two Lycanrocs, um, it's a 50-50 odds of uh, the father passing down the ball or the mother. A, f a male Pokemon will only pass down its ball if you breed with Ditto. And that's pretty much it uh, as far as the balls go. So yeah, um, that's a, that's my shiny Lycan Rock and that's my tangent on uh, Pokeballs. I don't think there's anything else uh, as far as breeding goes, so I'm going to cut the video there. Um, thank you for watching. I hope this helps uh, whether or not you want to do uh, competitive breeding or if you want to uh, just shiny hunt or even just uh, breed specific Pokeballs for a, a themed team. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time, and bye bye people Or I should say, bye bye internet. <laughs>